Was it 1918? No, it's the... 1917. Congress declared war on the Central Powers in Europe. So we hadn't actually been attacked. Um, there were little attacks, like Lusitania, um, but there wasn't a, a wide-scale attack by Pearl Harbor. So it was a congressional declaration. And when did the World War One end? So this is basically history. 1918. And for Europe, there was a Treaty of Versailles that came after this. So war is pretty easy to tell because you go back and you look at history, there's like the Thirty Years' War uh, in Europe. There is the Hundred Years' War between France and England. And these wars, you can mark their exact beginning and their exact end with these treaties, with these agreements. The treaties usually recognize um, the borders that existed before it, or they may recognize a new condition. So, wars have a history of being very defined. In the U.S., it's a bit different. In the U.S., we uh, like to treat war as a moral thing. In fact, Jimmy Carter said the war on energy was the moral equivalent of war. War on Yep. He came out in 1979, said to Americans, uh, we have an oil crisis, please turn down your thermostat, please wear your sweater. This is the moral equivalent of war, becoming energy independent. What did you like a nuclear engineer? He was an engineer, yes, not a nuclear engineer, I don't sure. think. Uh, he was a peanut farmer before that. But yes, he did get his degree in engineering. I'm not sure exactly what his degree was, I mean, it could have been nuclear engineering. But Jimmy Carter was talking in terms of the long history of moral wars. So, going back to, say, the civil rights movement, we have. Um, Wars on poverty. You know, that entailed, for instance, the Great Society programs. Medicare, Medicaid, welfare. We lose that What? We lose that war. Well, <laughs> we didn't lose that war entirely. But we did have some success. And this war entails such things as uh, AFTC, Aid for Families with Dependent Children. Then there was the war on drugs. We created the Drug Enforcement Administration. Then there was the uh, war on crime. We put a thousand more police on the streets. So whenever we tackle a moral war, we do have a institutional commitment or a monetary commitment to defeating it. I mean, in the case of the war on drugs, we actually sent troops down to Panama to arrest Manuel Noriega because he was a supplier of drugs to the U.S. So all these cases of previous wars, they don't really require troops. They don't require invading other countries. So we're putting the war on terror under the same category. It's not really a war in a technical sense because think of it this way. If this started in 9-11, when will the war on terror end? Never. Why? You can't sign a treaty with them. <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't sign a treaty with terrorists. True. There, there is no head of a terrorist organization that will say, okay, we'll stop fighting. They're all over the world. They're like guerrilla warfare. Yeah, they're insurgents. Militias. They're militias, exactly. But how about instead of signing a treaty with them, we just kill them? Can we end the war that way? Yes, you could. I mean, we don't really know but then, who exactly. Who then we go against the war. Exactly. We don't know who to kill. We don't know who all the... 
they can say, like, they're terrorists. They'll be like, I'm not a terrorist. Well, and there's yeah, also the possibility okay. that as you create one terrorist, you create ten more after that. So here's a fundamental problem with the whole war on terror. We have a history of wars and moral wars. The, the problem is that when we talk about the war on terror, we don't know whether it's literal or metaphorical. And if it is literal, how do we actually win it? I mean, do we go and attack Iran next? Do we attack Saudi Arabia? Do we attack Syria? Do we attack every single country that is a potential supplier of terrorists? How do we know they're not here? They could be here, in fact. And, that's, and we're going to talk about that a bit when we get to the Patriot Act. So this is the fundamental problem. How do you have a good strategy to win the war on terror? Is it even possible? I mean, all you have to do is they say, well, we're going to just target those people who are part of the Wahhabi sect.